Hey, good day beautiful people. Greet you in a wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we honor him and we praise him. We give him thanks for what he is doing and establishing in our lives. So we continue on Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 24 today. Uh, 23, my apologies. And kind of a difficult one, so I had to think about it and ask God, okay, what do you want to say to me today? What do you, God, want to tell us? Because we're studying Isaiah from a prophetic point of view. We're studying it to see how God works and operates in our lives in this year. And I feel and think this here, our topic is God is in control. No matter what the situations are, how it looks like, what the facts are, according to our human understanding, and mind and we read in Isaiah the way that God works and it is prophetic and we made a difference between prophecy prophetic intercession watchmen's uh, people on a tower we talked about archers and we talked about all kinds of keys of authority that we have and how do we intercede then and how do we pray how do we use God's word not misuse it, but use it or apply it, better word maybe, to apply God's word. Um, Isaiah 23 tells us that the Lord of hosts is determined to dishonor the pride of all human glory. Hmm. And we talked about that here. So we see there's a time frame like 70 years. That's a frame that is a human time frame. And we see and we read in Isaiah 23 that Tyrus gain and they have their pay and there is a continual commercial form of fornication going on with all the kingdoms of the world. Now let's see what's going on in this day and age um, where we live in. So we try to intercede, we try to pray, uh, not try but we do, um, using God's word, using the spirit, Bible-based, Christ-centered and spirit-led always. To see how these kingdoms of the world um, are actually having an influence and how it actually works. If we read verse 18, so let's just read, um, my focus is on verse 17 and 18 uh, from Isaiah 23. It says that, And it shall come to pass after the end of 70 years that the Lord will visit Tyre, or Tyre, and she shall turn to her higher and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. Whoa, hard words, uh, but we understand that Isaiah is a difficult book, but we're studying it. And her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord, holiness to the Lord, and it shall not be treasured nor laid up, for her merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord to eat uh, sufficiently and for durable clothing now let's go just have a quick look at when we read Isaiah 23 for example we understand that the bad reputation is hard to live down if you don't really change and just how long does it take according to Isaiah verse 15 it takes more than a generation 70 years uh, according to the days of one king, after the end of 70 years, shall Tyre sing as an harlot. Ooh, hard words, but why? I get the impression that although Tyre may have been on her good behavior for an entire generation, the nation had not changed its na nature. So again, change. As soon as there was a change in leadership, Tyre went back to its old ways and its old reputation as a harlot. Hard words. So how do we feel this? How do we understand this? What does God actually want to tell us? It just tells me it's not enough to temporarily stop doing bad things because you don't want others to think badly of you, of course. And you cannot keep that up for an eternity. What you need and what Tyre needed was a transformation, a change. Like Jesus promised, therefore, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creation, a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things 
are become new. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. And he gives us a new heart, eternal life, a new reputation. He gives, he gives us a new name. We can read that in Revelation 2 verse 17. Now based on this, I want to focus as well on Psalm 45, which is fairly interesting because we see the same coming back. And we see here that she will um, bring treasures, and these treasures will be a holy offering to God. Who is she? Tyre. Psalm 45, verse 10 to 11. Oh, well, let's start from, yeah, let's 10 to 17, actually. So Psalm 45. Hearken, O daughter, and consider, and incline thine ear, and forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy lord, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tyre, Tyre, shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is, a gl is all glorious within, and her clothing is of wrought gold. Verse 14, she shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee with gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought, and they shall enter into the king's palace. Verse 16, Instead of thy father shall be thy children, whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. And our verse in Psalm 45 is, I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. So the Psalm, or this Psalm, Psalm 45, together with Isaiah um, 23, is where it, uh, it is written to celebrate the wedding of a king. And how do I compare those two in our practical understanding of how things work? We'll get to that. And the kings of Judah came from the line of David, which, in, which, which is seen to be a case in this instance. And the psalmist's praise for the king is profuse, and he is moved by the event taking place, and he wants to put forth his best effort. And we always try to put forth our best effort. And the psalmist extols, I think the word extols is quite right, both the character of the king. Now, what is the character of the king? Because we are a priestly nation. We are king, kings within Christ. Grace, truth, humility, righteousness. Remember? Grace, truth, humility, and righteousness. And the oppressive and um, valiant actions of the king. What are these? Um, victory and majesty. So we have... A few words coming out, trying to understand how God works, how God operates, how do we intercede, how do we pray, what do we pray, and how, what do we learn from Isaiah 23, together with Psalm 45. And the king stands beside his bride, dressed in gold. Ophir is thought to have been located somewhere in Western Arabia. And at this point, the psalmist turns his attention to addressing the bride, advising her to shift her strongest loyalties from her family to a new husband. So, maybe we're talking about women here. The king is stricken with her beauty, and she should honor him in return. And the psalmist's description of the bridal court emphasizes not only its splendor, but also the atmosphere of joy that prevails, an atmosphere of joy. So we read um, Isaiah 23, we, we think, oh, what are we making from this? But we understand there's a woman. We understand there's that beauty and the promises of God. And we are going to pray and we say, hear, O daughter, and consider and incline your ear. And forget your people and your father's house, and the king will desire your beauty, since he is your Lord. Bow down. Father God, help us to look to you, and not our family or friends, to fulfill us and heal our longing hearts. You are the only one who can heal us, reassure us, and bring the comfort we do desire. 
Father, we pray that our thoughts and desires will become one with yours. We already have your approval through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, because he paid the penalty for our sins. All we have to do is to accept it in faith, and we will be saved. Your salvation is so much bigger, Lord, than we would could ever imagine. You save our souls and make all things new. I am a new creation. And you can heal our hearts, our desire, and restore all that has been lost. Transformation. You are the resurrection and the life. And we trust you to bring deliverance, restoration, and a new life in every area of our lives. You are able and we choose to trust you, not ourselves. And we trust you to rescue us and not people, even well-meaning people. Help us to remember your faithfulness so we can let go of the things we cling to because of fear and doubt in our lives. Thank you for your grace and thank you for the cross, for your son, Jesus Christ. And we bow to you, Lord. Amen and Amen. May your day be blessed.